Hey guys, welcome to another webinar, another Tuesday webinar. I just noticed it's very weird the door being open, but the family is out today, so I don't have to shut the door. Um, what we're going to be discussing today, and this is going to be a very informal webinar in comparison to the other ones, and, and really it's just a place for you as well to share personally what's helped you and what helps you with your mental health. And I'm going to be talking personally on, on my experience as well. And I really wanted this webinar just to be a place for you if you want to get engaged and in, you know, collaborate in some way and get across what helps you. Because I think it's really important as these weeks develop and as we're getting this core group of people onto these webinars that I give you the possibility to be able to share as well. What I also want to point out just quickly as well, guys, is we are having um, one of one of my one of my colleagues is going to be really focusing on these webinars as a whole. So what I mean by that is we're looking at them and we're figuring out, OK, what topics can we be coming up with every week? How does that fit in with what we're doing in terms of the content within the app and at the same time stuff that we're pushing out on social media? And at the same time, who is the guest that we can get on to the webinar? So it isn't just me sitting here every Tuesday at 1 p.m. You know, we've had guests in the past, but it really is we're looking to kind of manage it out and plan it out ahead as well. So what we're actually going to be doing just to kind of before we start today is every month we are going to be working on different themes and different topics. And I believe in August, we're actually looking at women's mental health as a whole. So we're actually breaking down a variety of different topics from menopause to dealing with um, infertility, breastfeeding, lots of different sort of approaches to it and how that impacts women as a whole in terms of their mental health. Then, of course, the next month, we'll be looking at a different theme, a different topic, and that will continue as the months progress. So it gives us a bit of direction. And at the same time, we're going to be adding content into the app because of that. But also some of these webinars will, of course, fit in with those topics as well. So looking forward to kind of really kind of implementing that into these sessions. And, and like I say, today is going to be a very informal chat where I'm going to be sharing what helped me and what helps me. So we're going to break it down into two ways. And then I want to hear from you what helped you and what helps you. And I'll explain what I mean in just a minute. But guys, um, let me know. Can you hear me okay? Should have asked that before, but let me know if you can hear me okay. And then secondly, let me know how your week has been. How has your week been? Has there been any challenges? Has it been okay? Let me know. Hey, Kelly, hopefully you're doing well. Awesome, Nancy. How's your week been, guys? I always feel like I'm asking this question and then I sit here and I try and reflect back on the week. And then I realize it seems like yesterday when I asked that question. Um, right? It, it's, it goes so quick. But yeah, my week's been good. My weekend was busy. My mum has got a puppy, which is very, very nice. And, um, you know, my mum is amazing. My mum, as, as I think I've mentioned in the past, she's a full-time carer for my brother. My brother is, is disabled because of an accident that he had at work about three years ago. And, you know, they, 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 those two amaze me. They inspire me every day. And my mum had a little dog. And this the dog called Charlie was really, I mean, he saved us in a lot of instances. You know, when we lost my dad, he was there just making us laugh and getting us out of the house, going for walks. And then when my brother's accident happened, it was the same. You know, he was getting my mum out for walks and it was really my mum's companion. If you've got a dog, you might understand. And, and we sadly lost um, him about two and a half years ago. So to see her getting a puppy again and to see her really having a purpose and a passion um, for this really kind of excited me as well. And actually, not saying we did this because of that. We've been looking at them for a couple of weeks. We actually, um, we actually got a puppy as well on Saturday, but we can't get in for another couple of weeks because he's still too young. Caroline says, um, "Been a good week." Katie says, I'm "Watching this from Sunderland, awesome. I'm really good. Just preparing to make the move from Lancashire to Sunderland in 35 days. Is that because of university, Katie?" Uh, Caroline says, welcome to the Northeast. Katie, I'm in Gateshead. Nancy says, very difficult week this week, riding in the storm. Sometimes that's all we can do, Nancy, and just know that that storm will pass. Tough week with system issues, work pressure and distractions at home. Feeling quite good compared to last week. Caroline's excited. 
to go to the campus for university. Awesome. Kelly is much better now. Picked up some sort of bug last week. Ford floored me physically and mentally. I always find there's such a, everyone always talks about, and I talk about it a lot, right? You know, how we need to really focus on mental health in comparison to physical health. And the reason why I talk a lot about that is because, of course, there's a huge emphasis on physical health and, and really a kind of neglect of mental health. You know, I always ask the question to people, what's more important, your mental health or your physical health? And, and believe it or not, 95% of people will always say your mental health is far more important. But then when you actually say to them, but what do you prioritize? Like if you looked at their lifestyle, it's always physical health. But I certainly believe there's a real kind of um, correlation between the two, you know, and, and if you're physically unwell, that has a massive impact on your, on your mental health and then vice versa. If you're mentally unwell, it has a massive impact on your physical health as well. Janine says, all good here. I can actually see you today as just back from having a haircut. Good stuff. Hopefully it went well. Um, all right, guys. So what we're going to do, and I want you to have a little think about this, is I'm going to share. And, and while I'm sharing, I want you to have a little think about what's, what um, you would answer this to. And then just feel free to pop it in the chat box whenever you're ready. And then I'm going to read it. Um, out loud if, you, if you're comfortable with that. But I think it's really important that we all know that mental health is so individual, right? And, and what helps me is, is going to be different to maybe what helps you. So I think it's really important if you can engage in this, I would really appreciate it to, to share what helps you because, you know, I can take inspiration from that. Other people on this webinar can take inspiration from that. People that watch this on the webinar, and we normally have a lot of people that watch this on the replay, sorry, um, afterwards can take inspiration from that. So I think it's really key if you can get in, engaged and involved with this. I think it's um, going to help a lot. So the first question is what helped you? Now, what I mean by that is what helped you deal with the lowest points that you've been in? So not what helps you right now that maybe you do on a day-to-day -day or weekly basis, but what helped you when you was in your lowest points. And I've just made a couple of notes here, but I think looking back at it, my lowest points, if I, if I had to pick out a certain point in my life was, as I say, just after my dad's suicide. And probably the lowest point was once the funeral had passed, once I'd gone back to work, that period there and the reason why I believe that period there was the most difficult for me is because I was wearing that mask and you know when when we lost when I lost my dad there's obviously lots of support you're almost in autopilot mode because you're dealing with a lot of stuff and you know funeral arrangements all of that and you're almost just getting by and it's almost very robotic the hardest point that I found for me was when everything went back to normality you know, I was on holiday with my friends, you know, my friends were asking if I'm okay, but not as much as they once were. I was going back to work and, and, and I was wearing this mask and I was trying to show everyone that I was dealing with it and I really wasn't. So that really for me was at my lowest. But what helped me was one, therapy. And I've spoken about this a lot of times, but it was finding the right person that I felt comfortable to talk to. And that lady was um, Anne. And, you know, she was someone that I still speak to today, more of a holistic therapist. I tried two therapists before that didn't really seem to help me but like I said that was about two years after that period of time but therapy was my release my way of expressing how I was feeling at that time as well the second one which was huge was small wins now what I mean by that is I remember myself being in that dark situation when when sometimes getting out of bed in the mornings was a challenge you know no one knew that but getting out of bed in the mornings was a challenge sometimes for me I would still do it but it would be a challenge but what my mind was telling me to do was like I say, you know, get out of bed, get up at 5 a.m., you know, get some work done, go to the gym, get a workout in, go for a 5K run. If I go for a 5K run, it has to be fast, you know, make sure I'm very productive throughout the whole day. So my mind was setting such high expectations of me. But when you're in that low place, as I said, just getting out of bed in the mornings is a challenge. So what really helped me was small wins because what happens is when I would get out of bed and I would struggle and I would say, right, come on, Paul, just snap out of it. You're going to be fine. Let's just have a good day. Let's go to the gym. And then the depression, the, you know, all of the kind of stuff that was overwhelming me kicks in. And then I don't go to the gym. All I then found myself doing was beating myself up and telling myself that I'm a failure and telling myself that I'm not a good person. And then you dig deeper into that hole, right? So what I started to do was small wins. I think one of them was like just doing 10 press-ups in the morning, which doesn't sound a lot, but that kind of just made me feel like I'd achieved something. 
making the bed in the mornings, um, you know, going for a five minute walk and just getting outside the house to break up the day. And all of those small little wins, every time I did them, I congratulated myself on them. Like, you know, oh, you did, you did 10 press ups, great. You know, tomorrow we'll do 12. The next day we'll do 14. The next day we'll do 16. And it sounds so tedious, but those small wins put me more in a, in a more positive mindset. And I really kind of focused on that. And I still do that today. Um, I'm going to come to yours because I can see these coming in. The third one is gratitude. I still use that today. But what Anne helped me get to after a certain period of time was, was gratitude. So I was in a very negative mindset. I was sort of very focused on being the victim. I was very focused on what had happened that I couldn't control or what was going to happen that, again, I couldn't control. And what Anne helped me realize was just how much I have to be grateful for. And we have to force that upon ourselves. And, and that for me was journaling, writing down every day, three things that I'm grateful for and why I'm forcing it upon myself. But, but doing that, again, starts to just naturally put me into a more optimistic mindset um, as well. The fourth one was learning, just becoming a scientist in some ways that I say it. You know, this was so important to me. I needed to feel better. I didn't want to end up like my dad. That was just, you know in my mind all the time, it was, it was, it was always there. You know, I don't want to end up like my dad. I don't want to end up like my dad. And, um, I had to learn, I had to learn. And I went on this whole sort of journey in a way, if you want to call it, of trying different stuff and seeing what worked for me and learning and learning and learning. And what I found with mental health is there's a misunderstanding around mental health and there's a lack of education around mental health. You know, I always sort of say in some of my content, I was taught how to pay, play, busy be on the recorder if you know you know i was taught how to master algebra i was taught how many planets there are in the universe but i was not taught how to deal with grief i was not taught how to deal with stress i was not taught how to deal with my emotions and we're not educated on it so in a way we have to take that upon ourselves and educate ourselves on the importance of it and what we can do to better our mental health as well and then the fifth one what helped me deal with my lowest was asking for help you know, it doesn't make me weak to ask for help. It doesn't make me um, less of a man to ask for help. You know, it doesn't mean that if I ask for help, that person is going to judge me because everyone has something that they're dealing with and asking for help is, is, is a way of getting out of that dark hole that we all need to get into as well. So that's what helped me, guys. I'm looking forward to seeing what helped you. So Pia says what helped me having something to look forward to. So that hope, I guess, and that purpose as well, that kind of keeps you going. Um, to keep going, to have hope. I should have just read your answer, here. To keep going and have hope, faith, that there's something worth living for in the future. I really like that, Pierre. And a lot of the studying that I've done around um, suicide first aid in particular, so assist training, and just speaking to Rory O'Connor, who heads up suicide research at Glasgow University, a good friend of mine, and, and seeing his perspective of it from what he's done in terms of research, it always comes down to hope. Like if someone's in that dark situation and they can't see any way out of it, it always comes down to hope. And hope gives them that, that 1% to keep going in that day, in that moment. And I think that's so important, Pia, of, of like if you're in this dark place and, and everything's being thrown at you and you don't really know what to be doing, it's having that hope, that faith that it can get better and there's something worth living for in the future, which I really, really like that, um, Pia. Katie says, surprisingly, write and help me. I wrote down the problems I was experiencing and did a brainstorm of ideas that could help me get over the current hurdle at the time and speaking to one person who I really trust. I like that. Writing, in a way, is still you expressing how you're feeling, right? But sometimes we don't have to vocalize it. Writing it down can be that impactful um, you know, release in a way as well. Um, so like journaling, and I know a lot of counselors or therapists will always try and encourage their, their patients to, to use a journal or a diary to kind of note down um, what they were feeling as well. Like my dad, um, everyone always sort of talks about, you know, did my dad ever like write, you know, why he was feeling the way that he was, you know, he was asked to write a diary. And what was surprising to us when we lost him and we didn't really we didn't look at his diary you know we didn't really know what to do we didn't know what boundaries we could sort of you know push um you know there was days where we were with my dad and my dad seemed fine right but when when we lost him and we managed to find his diary 
and we looked through it because we were just confused and we wanted any clues to as to know why those days that we thought he was fine in his diary was 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 writing a completely different story right and um you know in a way i think just just writing down how we feel is is so important sometimes to get us through those darker days uh caroline says what helped me close friends therapy in particular cbt and being able to openly talk about how i was feeling I used to think I had to always be the strong one, caring for everyone else while neglecting myself. Caroline, that's so, so important, right? And then I guess when we're in that dark situation, we still believe that we have to be focused on everyone else around us. But how can we serve everyone else around us when we're in that dark situation ourselves? In a way, when we're in those dark situations ourselves, the focus, the emphasis has to be on us. Because as you said, how can you always be the strong one when you're struggling to find the strength for yourself in that moment. And also on that note as well, Caroline, I like how you said, you know, therapy, particular CBT. And we've spoken about this in another webinar with when it comes to choosing the right therapist and there's some content going in the app very shortly on it as well. But it really is about finding what works for you. You know, I know CBT works for a lot of people. I know CBT doesn't work for other people as well. So it's finding what works for you. As I've said, you know, Anne was more of a holistic therapist, really introduced me more to um, looking at kind of like the bigger picture and a different perspective of stuff. And, and that really helped me as well. So it's really important to find the, the practice that works for you. Kelly says, keeping active works for me, getting out of the house, fresh air, still going to the gym, best release for me as well. Yeah, 100%. I think it's getting that balance as well, right? Because when we know, are we, are we keeping busy? Um, like busy and active, I guess, right? Like, like keeping active is that focused um practice of this is me getting out of the house getting that release even when I'm, I'm really really struggling um whereas keeping busy all the time is sometimes we use that as our way of distracting ourselves from the emotions that we're feeling but you like you said just just getting out of the house getting that fresh air is such a huge release for a lot of a lot of us um i know when i'm having really really sort of bad days and my mind's telling me, don't go for a run, don't go for a run, don't go for a walk. The best thing I can do in that moment is go for a run and go for a walk. Because as soon as I've done that, I come back and I feel a lot, lot better. So yeah, definitely keeping active is a big one as well. Uh, Kate says it's taboo that it needs to be highlighted in men's mental health because men won't speak about how they feel because they think others will judge them. I think they are not a real man. It's so important to talk. It really, really is. And of course, with men, you know, biggest killer of men under the age of 45 right now is suicide. And, and we need to move away from that taboo of me talking about how I feel makes me less of a man. Me talking about how I feel, um, you know, makes me, makes me weak, right? And from a lot of discussions that I've had and a lot of work that I've done with construction companies as well, you know, every guy, however they look, whether they're a builder, whether they're a boxer, whether they're you know, extremely successful in business, everyone has mental health, you know, and, and, and that's so important. And I think what we're now seeing is, is, is men redefining what masculinity means. And what I mean by that is, is guys that, that feel like they can define what masculinity means to them and they can own that and that can empower them. And I think a lot of it comes down to masculinity now is actually understanding that vulnerability is a strength. You know, hiding behind how we're feeling actually is, is what I believe is a weakness, right? If I'm hiding behind how I'm feeling and I'm pretending to be someone that I'm not because I'm scared of what people might say about how I feel, I don't believe that's me owning my masculinity, right? I believe it's me um, sharing my vulnerabilities and, and owning them as well. And, and I feel like we are definitely redefining that with time. But with that, Katie, there's an amazing charity, Calm, Campaign Against Living Miserably. They do a lot of sort of partnerships with, with football. I did some work with them and the FA. So I got to meet some England footballers, which was really cool, and, and hear their sort of opinions on mental health. They also do a lot of stuff with stand-up comedy. They do a lot of stuff with music. I think to really try and engage men in the conversation around mental health, we have to do it in a way that gets them in, into the communities that they're used to as well um caroline says very true i wanted to fix everyone else but it was me that needed to fix him 100 percent um george says i adopted similar steps to pull myself out and boost my mood after the lowest levels in my life my late father's passing death of two cousins and an uncle who's like a father figure to help me overcome the grief and anxiety i meditated prayed went to the gym or for walks used positive affirmations tried to socialize and wrote to relatives george thanks so much for sharing and definitely you know it sounds like a very very 
hard time for you to, to be able to deal with all of that. And I'm sure that's definitely led to a lot of the adversities led to a lot of the strength and the courage that I see that you have on these webinars when you show up every single week. Um, but definitely positive affirmations was one that actually stood out to me. Um, positive affirmations is, is, is one that I use a lot of as well and really got me to write them down, say them aloud, say them aloud. And she always used to explain that your mind is almost like a computer. Like my laptop in front of me right now, I shut it down, I turn it on, it will turn on in exactly the same way because it's programmed to do it in a certain way. If I click the browser, the browser will open up in the same way because it's programmed to do that. The only way that's ever going to change is to reprogram the, the computer, to reprogram um, my laptop. And, and she said, it's the same with your mind. You know, every morning you wake up and your mind will wake up in the same way that it always does. It will tell you the negative, you know, thoughts that it's been having. It will tell you that you're not a good person. It will tell you that you shouldn't get up today. The only way that we can change that is, is look at your mind as a computer and reprogram that. And the way that she tried to get me to reprogram it was through affirmations and to recondition those kind of patterns that I had. So that definitely stood out for me too as well, George. Cool. Um, Katie, 100%. Yeah, do it. Uh, Nancy says, learning to say no and being comfortable in saying that you are, a not, you are not okay and cannot deal with something. I love that. Good stuff. Right. Then the next one is what helps me and what helps you. So we've done this, but think about what do you do every day? And I mean, every day without foul that makes you feel that little bit better. And it might be something that you don't force upon yourself on a daily basis, but what is it that you do that you find that little bit of joy from? Um, and you find that little bit of joy and you, you feel better, right? It's almost like, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel better from this. You know, for me, exercise, and, and I agree with, um, I agree with Kelly on that. Just being active running is, is really my advice. I went to the gym today. First time I went to the gym, but just because I wanted to push that, that comfort zone, I haven't been there for a long time. Um, but still running is, is, is really what helps me the most. I was feeling, and I'll be honest, I was feeling a bit rubbish on Sunday morning. Um, and I don't know why, I'm just, you know, you know what it's like, guys. I was feeling rubbish on Sunday morning. And I don't know why. That's what I'm going to say. And I just went for a run. But instead of going, we didn't have a lot of time because we were going out as a family. But instead of um, not going for that run, I said to my wife, I said, look, I feel a bit crap. Um, I just need to go for a run literally 10, 15 minutes and I'll be back. Um, I think she understands me now. And, and I went for this 10, 15 minute run headphones in go come back bit of sweat feeling a bit better go in a shower and and i did feel i did feel better right and it did set me up a little bit better for that day so so sometimes just just being active and forcing it upon myself to do a bit of exercise helps me massively um therapy still talking to Anne. every time i go to Anne or every time i speak to Anne, i go in there saying i don't need this right i don't need to speak to Anne. i'm doing good and, and the reason why I think I say that is because there's something bubbling away that I don't really want to expose. I go and speak to Anne, I go and see Anne, I come out and I'm like, wow, I've learned something today. I feel better. I feel like there's a weight lifted off my shoulders. And, and that for me is forcing it. I have to force going to therapy because I feel like sometimes I don't need it, but in reality I do. Uh, the third one is, is reading and podcasts. You know, I'm a big fan of podcasts, audio books, always learning. And I, I, you know, when I'm out for a run, I don't really listen to music. Even sometimes now when I'm in the car, I'll always put on a podcast or an audio book because I always want to learn. I always want to develop more about myself. And I feel like that gives me a bit of advice to feel better as well. Um, my work, believe it or not, is massive. Like My work gives me that meaning. I wake up on a Monday morning. Sometimes the weekends I actually struggle with because I do love work. Um, and I do love that. And, and, and I think because of the meaning behind my work, it really, really drives me and it makes me feel like I'm, I'm doing good. And that really helps me with my mental health. Family time is important as well. And just making sure that I really switch off when I have that family time. And then the last one before I read your ones that just come to my mind was me time. Like I have to be on my own. Right. And, and, you know, sometimes explaining that to people, especially like your, your spouse, your loved ones, your kids, whoever, your friends, that I want to be on my own um, is hard for them to understand. But I feel like my wife now understands that it was always difficult at first, but I just I love being on my own. Right. And I need to be on my own sometimes to to regenerate and rejuvenate how I'm feeling. So then when I'm with my family, I, I can be there and I can I can be the best dad, the best husband that I can be. 
And, and that's why I also think I like my work, right? Because it's me on my own. I've got my day. I can schedule it out. I can, you know, do it how I want. Um, but I need that alone time. I need that me time. I love traveling on my own. I love, you know, going, going and doing stuff on my own as well, running on my own. So, so I need that, my, I need that alone time as well. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that, but that's really, really important for me. Cool. Right. What helps you? Washing my face with cold water in the morning actually helps. Yep. I love that Pia. Have you ever done cold showers as well, Pia? I went through a stage of doing cold showers where I would get in the shower, I would keep it warm, I would wash, and then I would just switch it to cold and I would stay in there for as long as I could possibly stay in there. And that definitely, definitely helped. Um, lots of people say about ice. I don't know if you've seen this with ice, but just like rubbing ice on your forehead. It sounds, it sounds sad. It sounds bad me sort of saying it out loud. But I've tried it a couple of times and that works as well. But P, I always said that to my, my boy. Um, my, my eldest boy, I always say to him, look, you're in a bit of a, you're in a bit of a funk, you know, if he's been playing Xbox or if he's just not in the mood, or has been watching us tell you, I'm like, go wash your face with cold water and he'll go splash his face with cold water. And then I'm like, then hang your head out of a window or something like that. And, and he then, like, Oh, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot fresher. And it's just kind of changing state, I guess. Um, Tony Robbins talks a lot about changing state. And I believe that that has that impact. Nancy says walking helps her. Um, and I think with walking as well, it's, it's, it's that, that mindfulness of walking sometimes, you know, going out for your walk, it's quite a mindful activity. Kate says, I love it that your wife understands you. And I think some people taboo struggle to tell their partner how they're feeling because they're scared of their reactions or words. Yeah, it's definitely, again, it's been a process, it's been a process, right? You know, I believe mental health, your own recovery, telling others, everything's a process. You know, I didn't, I didn't tell my wife you know, we, we weren't, we weren't husband and wife then, but I didn't, I didn't tell her about anything for a good couple of years because of, the, because again, like you say, of that judgment, if I tell her, she's going to judge me. She's not going to see me in the same way that she sees me. Um, and, and if I'm honest, you know, with the whole me having my own time, it's been a figuring out of like, you know, just, just, you know, why is it, why does he want to be on his own? And, and, and our, with time, you kind of figure it out. I, I mean, and my wife as well, you know, there's stuff that, I don't understand sometimes with what she does, but now I understand it, right? And it's about giving them that space um, and understanding everyone's everyone's different. And not everyone's perfect, right? Um, family time, reading, walking, trying to get the right amount of sleep, random acts of kindness, spending time with friends. Love that. Two that stand out to me there, Caroline, is right amount of sleep. Like we obviously have done a webinar on this, but I think that's so vital. And random acts of kindness. I like that. Um, just doing something kind every day massively, massively helps. And I think just think like, how can I give value to others? Like, how can I, how can I give the value to this person? Um, and we, we often neglect the value that we can offer people, right? So like, there's so much value that we can all give to other people. And I don't know how that looks, but we often neglect our, our own value. So, so sometimes like, I'm just thinking about a conversation I had with someone yesterday and we were on Skype, he was a guy in America, and I was like, look, if there's anything I can do for you, actually, how about I do this for you? And to me, I didn't feel like that was a lot of value, but he emailed me after the call, and he was like, thank you so much, no, you didn't have to do that. Um, so I feel like sometimes, you know, just offering value and being kind to people um, is, is, is massively impactful for our own mental health as well. Uh, walking and going on a little adventure. Today I felt a little bit weird, so I got up, showered, and found Roka Beach and dipped my little size six feet in the water. It was so calm, and it's time for me to reflect in the last couple of days. I love that. I love that. There's, I need to, I'm, I'm not gonna butcher the quote or the saying, but it was really about how we need to find that space each day. And the way that we do that is, is to step away from everything, right? You know, like you said, just going on a little adventure, just going to the beach, going for a walk, going to nature and stepping away from everything can have a massive impact on how we feel. And I feel like we neglect doing that because our minds are like, you've got to be, you've got to do this for your kids. You've got to do this for, you know, your friends. You've got to do this for work. You've got this, you've got this, you've got this. And you've got, you've got like an endless to-do list going on in your mind. So there's no rational thought that comes in and says, but make sure you go to the beach for an hour and just switch off from everything because it's just never going to happen. So we have to force it. Right. And we have to say, I've got this endless to do list. I've got this endless list of stuff that I should be doing for other people as well. 
but I need to drop all of that and I need to just spend half an hour, an hour on, on, on me and getting out there. Like they said, we're human beings, we're not human doings, right? I tried cold showers, but I wouldn't say I was successful. Um, small little gestures can often mean the most to someone, 100%. Um, Romanus is nice to see you. I have a question. People are always suffering from difficulties. What's the best solution about this? Um, Romana, I think, is a difficult question. People that are always suffering from, from sort of mental health challenges, I would definitely, if that's the case, recommend sort of professional help as, as early as you possibly can. Um, seek that professional help because if it's a constant feeling of not being able to deal with you know, the mental health challenges that you're facing, then of course, there, there's probably an underlying illness or issue that there that's need to be addressed. And that's something that a professional needs to needs to approach and the professional needs to look at. So I think if that's the case, where you've been aware enough to understand that I'm always facing these, these difficulties, then seek professional help at your earliest is the advice that I would give. Okay, it says it's lovely to help others, but many of us sometimes forget that we need to focus on ourselves too. Yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent. Um, Cool. Guys, is there any questions that you want to ask at all? And let me know what you think of this. I really found this valuable for me, guys. Like um, seeing a lot of your um, answers, like, I, I always learn from, from other people as well. And hopefully, rather than me kind of standing here saying, this is what helps me and then not factoring in what helps you, it is in a way maybe giving you some more ideas. So hopefully this has helped. I think just kind of recapping a lot of what we saw when it comes to what helped you in those dark moments comes back to, I think, what Pia said, which is that hope. You know, everything that we do in those dark moments, whether it's the small wins, whether it's therapy, whether it's reaching out to a friend, you know, whether it's being active, all of that is to give us that hope. So we need to do whatever we can in those dark moments to, to, to find hope, to find meaning, to continue. Because... Let's be honest, you know, all of us might have been in those dark situations or we might have faced adversity where in those dark situations, we feel like there's no way out of them. But we're all here today and we've all faced them and we've all got through them. And we all know that it does pass. We also all probably know that even though they've passed, there's probably going to be more in the future that we're going to have to deal with. So I think it's really important to hold on to that hope. And, and to know that it's going to pass, to know that light is, is at the end of the tunnel, to know that, you know, brighter days are upon us. But we have to hold on to hope during those times to be able to get there. And then I think in, in terms of, you know, what helps us on a day to day basis, it's really forcing it upon ourselves. It isn't natural for us to, to prioritize our own self-care, to prioritize our own mental health, to focus on it. Like I said, our, our minds aren't trained in that way. Um, society doesn't really sort of equip us in that way to focus on ourselves and to focus on our mental health. So we really have to force it. What are you doing every heart, every day for half an hour, an hour for yourself to help you with your mental health? And, and what do you know that works for you personally that other people might not understand, right? But you have to focus on that because that is what helps you in, in your own right. So guys, really appreciate you coming on to today's session. Um, if you do have any questions, I always do it, but you know, just in case you don't have it. Every mind, Paul, every mind at work.com, just drop me an email at all. Um, Katie says these sessions have helped me so much. No worries. You know, Katie, I appreciate you joining them and, and sharing um, yourself. Like I think, you know, that helps a lot of people too. No worries, Pia. No worries, Nancy. Really appreciate everyone from, for joining. We've got Romana. We've got Pia. We've got Nancy. We've got Mandy. We've got Kelly. We've got Katie. We've got Joanne. We've got Janine. We've got George. We've got Caroline. Um, and everyone who watches this on the replay as well. All right, guys. Many thanks for joining and see you all next session. Enjoy the rest of your week.